Hello guys and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Taylor. What I am filming today is a little bit of like a cosy fall vlog with some soup, with some hot drinks, with some new clothes, with actually some Christmas buys. I'm sorry, yes, I said it. The C word, Christmas. Um, I have bought a couple of things, but nothing too crazy. But yeah, this week I have been shopping. I don't have much time until it's actually gonna start going dark, which is why I have not managed to even dry my hair and is why I'm coming on here with a towel wrapped around my head. So apologies for that. Uh, the dogs are probably gonna be in and out of the video, completely fine. I first of all went to Zara just yesterday Day and I picked up some really nice new bits that I think you guys are gonna like. So we'll start with this one. Guys, you guys know that I absolutely live in my UTQ trainers. Utah. Oh, is it? My UTAC trainers, which are like the white, navy, and kind of like a cream mesh trainer. They are not a designer trainer. I think they were like 99 pounds or 99 euros over here. But I've lived and died in them, much more than even like my Balenciaga Triple S, which are obviously a very expensive buy. So these trainers, I was very happy when I saw these. And I just think these look so expensive. The color is gorgeous. I haven't tried them on because I'm always a size five in Zara footwear, but I just think these are vibing. Do you know what I mean? I just think these are so nice. I think these are gonna go with all of my flannel, with all of my autumn stuff. I think they're the kind of that gray that just goes with everything and doesn't stand out too much. So literally buzzing about them. But we do have a little bit of a situation because the day before, I went into a shopping mall called Al Porte Anglaise here in Marbella. And we can get rid of that bag now. And I bought a pair of New Balance. This is my first pair of New Balance since maybe like eight years ago when they went into fashion that time. And these aren't probably like the typical cool ones. I know there's the, I think it's the 720s that everyone's wearing at the minute. They didn't have them um, where I was shopping, but um, I don't know whether these are cool or not. I'm like going with that kind of thing now where I'm like, I'm not trying to think whether they're like the in shoe or whether they're super trendy. I'm just going on the fact that I like them. I don't worry about whether it's like Instagram trendy or whatever. If you like it, buy it. These were the trainers. They're, maybe they're not so similar as the other ones. I don't know. So these were 90 euros, which is quite expensive really. But New Balance is the vibe on Pinterest. Literally, it is the vibe. I thought that was quite a good buy. Okay, we might as well just stay on the footwear. Picked up these today from Mango. So you guys know I love, love, love a chunky boot, but I feel like this is kind of a very Stella McCartney type of boot because I feel like with some ankle boots that aren't like just a smidgen higher, they can almost be a little bit unflattering, um, but we'll give them a go later on. Oh my God, I'm gonna have to lose the, the hair turban. I'm gonna have to lose that. This is a seriously gorgeous fabric and it's like this oversized kind of like tweed but not too like farmery tweed where it's like country bumpkin. Maybe some like black leggings and then probably like you know something like these or my new balance. Not quite a blazer but it's not quite a coat. It's like in between so I feel like it a could. Boat. <laughs> It's a boat, yeah. It's a hit with the dogs. It's a hit with, is that, I told you guys, this is the indication that it's very, very soft. But I think you might be quite happy with the next item as well, Keith. So this was a kind of expensive coat from Zara. So this isn't actually my usual style. I like something that's either block color or something that's like a little bit more discreet. But on, it gives me major powerful woman vibes. Mrs. CEO. You're definitely gonna see this on my Instagram because I tried it on when I was in the store. I know that I absolutely love it. And I actually got a medium in this. Mmm, <laughs> that diet's going well. <laughs> what diet? No. This is a very oversized coat, so you can take it a size down. Guys, I feel like in the UK, you guys are going so nuts over waistcoats and you can't find them anywhere. So I managed to find another little waistcoat, which is gorgeous and is like this kind of like, and I think this is stunning, it's a v-neck, it's super, super soft. I got it in large and this was only like 20, well 30 euros, 29.99. So I thought that was really nice. Again, I'm just gonna. Zara, another piece. This isn't something that I would probably normally pick out. This is something I would imagine my granddad wearing. And again, I feel like all these vibes that I'm wearing will go with the new shoes, like the gray kind of tones. So yeah, I love that and I got this in a medium. And again, this was like 30 euros. So we got this 
shirt, which is like a popper shirt. I got this in a medium. Comes very oversized. It's got like the nice pockets and stuff. You could wear it as a dress and just stick some cycle shorts underneath. Or you could do like a denim jacket if you wanted to. This was really nice. It's not like my favorite piece of the bunch, but this is super soft. And I felt like if I want to just be a bit more like covered up, but still like a bit of a sexy vibe, you know, with a bit of like knee high boots, maybe for like a nice date night dinner or out with friends for like a couple, well not a couple of drinks, because we've actually decided to stop drinking. We're not gonna drink for the rest of the year. Me and Jack are the kind of people where if we're gonna drink at the weekend, we're drinking to get boozed up. So like on the occasions where we have been going out with our friends, we always get drunk. Then the next day me and Jack have the worst hangovers ever. Then we get disheartened and disappointed with ourselves. And we're like, oh, why are we hungover again? Like we wanted to go and do some nice photos, shoot YouTube videos. We just basically wanna be more productive. We've decided that we're not going to drink for the rest of 2020 and that includes Christmas and New Year as well. Our weekends now consist of doing a bit of work, shooting YouTube, doing some content, like we'll go for acupuncture this weekend. If you were going on a date night with drinks then this would be perfect with some like knee-high boots and it's super super soft. I got this in a large and this was 20 euros. Okay and then the last thing, um, I've been looking for some nice cardigans everywhere because the cardigan is back. It's not been back for a long time but those kind of like really cool vibe girls on Pinterest and Instagram wearing some really gorgeous cardigans. And although this isn't like the most oversized one, I thought this was a really nice color. I thought the kind of like raw edge was really chic and looks really expensive. It is 50 euros or 49.95. And again, I feel like the shoes with this whole like brown and gray and green kind of color palette will be so nice. So that ends the Zara um, pieces. And then I have two very exciting things because I am so excited for Christmas. I don't, I think this year I'm more excited because I know this apartment is ours. And like last year we didn't bother getting a tree or anything like that. This year we'll actually ship our own Christmas stuff over here. So it's gonna feel a lot more Christmassy. Plus last year we only had Jack's parents here for Christmas and I really missed having my family here. This year my mum, my dad and my nan are all coming over. So I'm gonna spend the Christmas with Jack's parents, my parents, and it's gonna be a big Christmas celebration, minus the alcohol. I have already started getting some Christmassy bits. So I went to Sephora, originally went in for a brow set, and I came out with everything but a brow set. Sure. Um, if, if you can recommend a brow set that isn't the Anastasia Beverly Hills clear brow gel, because I want to try something else. Plus I feel like the Anastasia Beverly Hills, it never actually really stays. It's not stiff enough, and I want something to kind of keep my brows up. Um, but anyway, I came out with this gorgeous perfume. This is the brand Low, I think that's how you say it. This is a white magnolia, and it is stunning. Jack, how amazing is this Really, smell? really nice. Mm. It just gives me real full vibes. I definitely recommend that as a new perfume. If you're looking for something new or you want to put something on your Christmas list, to be fair, it's not that expensive, but if you want to treat yourself, definitely recommend this perfume. I will link most of these things below for you, just in case you forget. I bought myself an advent calendar that looks like this. It's not a chocolate one, but best believe I will be getting a chocolate one as well. Um, this is a Sephora owned advent calendar and it has products in from Hourglass, Sunday Riley, some Sephora own, Huda Beauty, Milk Cosmetics, Mario Badescu, Benefit, Laneige, Origins, Tarte. It's 25 days of goodness of all different beauty products, so I'm super, super excited. It was pricey, I'm not gonna say the price in front of Jack, because he will kill me, but I just felt like I really wanted to, to treat myself. Don't be coming looking <coughs> for the price tag, because it's not on here. To soften the blow, in case Jack asked me how much the advent calendar was, I thought, do you know what, I'm gonna treat him to one as well. So this one was 60 euros. I got a Jack of Rituals calendar, it's 25 days, it's like a little village. I don't know whether you can see it, but. Basically, it's a little village of all of their 
best sellers. It's 24 days of their best sellers of like the little minis. But yeah, every day he's gonna have something special from his very special advent calendar from me. And I feel like if there's women's stuff in there, I can steal it for myself. Very excited about these, but we also will get our ye old faithful lint calendars because even though I eat my advent calendar by like day two of December, I just take it from around the back so he never knows that the windows have opened. That's a trick, by the way. If you didn't learn when you were younger because your mum would, your mum and dad would kill you if you wet your advent calendar early, you just literally pull the back out, eat it from the back, and the windows don't have to be open at the front. So that is a hack for you. But I'm gonna try and be good this year because it is quite exciting and like nostalgic to, you know, open one window a day. <laughs> oh, I've got really weapons and needles in my foot. Right, one sec. Where was I? Okay, so yeah, they were our first Christmas buys. I've already started to ask my mum and dad what they want for Christmas. My mum wants some something designer. She wants something special, so I'm gonna treat her because she deserves it. That's our first kind of Christmassy buys. I'm done with the haul. This is what I have bought this week. Now I am going to send Jack to the shop because I'm still not driving here in Spain and he's going to buy some stuff so I can show you how to make my favourite soup to have in autumn winter which is a cream and cauliflower soup. Plus I have a new soup maker which makes it all super super wow. easy. It's the Morphe Richards one that I've wanted for ages. I don't know why I've put it off. And basically you can cook a soup from scratch in 19 minutes. Can we get a round of applause everybody? Use. And someone's just called in and said, how much is the calendar? <laughs> Shut up. I'm excited to make that and not to have to use 10 hundred pots and utensils, which is what it normally takes me. It takes a village. Will hopefully also make me want to eat a bit healthier because you can just chuck vegetables, a bit of meat or whatever you want in and make some really delicious, hearty, healthy, full autumn winter, so soup. nurturing soups. Um, so yeah, we will now head to the kitchen and we will make some soup. Okay, so guys, I have had a little spruce up, dried my hair, just because if I don't dry my hair, it goes absolutely vile. Um, still can't get used to styling the bangs yet, so Jack has just kindly gone and got all of my ingredients. And what we're gonna make is my favorite soup ever. I'm literally talking as if I'm on a cooking show now and that I'm a chef, but I actually don't cook a lot at all. Like, I'm not very good at cooking. Every time autumn, winter comes, this is what I make for me and Jack with a lot of crusty bread and butter. So he's got some nice fresh baguettes, which are all hot over here for now. And the most important part of this video and the star of the show is the yeah. Morphe Richards soup maker. I've not used it yet. I have briefly read the instructions. Looks fairly simple, but I am also fairly simple. So <laughs> we'll see how that goes. Um, but very excited at the thought of just literally dunking everything into this pot and it being done within 19 minutes because usually, as I said, it takes literally a whole village, like every utensil in my drawer to make some soup. So this is gonna be like a really quick and easy way to make hopefully some healthy dishes. I mean, this one isn't that healthy um, because it's got cream in and obviously we're having bread and stuff with it. But if this works, I will be very tempted to just get a load of like goodness, bunk it all into here and make me and Jack some soup. For this soup, I'm gonna put a shopping list on the screen so you can see. Um, so take a picture of this now. So if you wanna make this, it's just gonna be really simple for you. I just got this from uh, the BBC Good Food website. You will need a large cauliflower I would have chose the big cauliflower and cut it, but Jack's chosen this, which should be like maybe a whole cauliflower's worth, so that should be fine. You need half a tablespoon of ground comino, if you're in Spain, which is cumin. Four thyme sprigs, but I hate thyme, so we're not doing thyme. Um, one onion, finely chopped, so we've just got ourselves a nice onion here. Selene onion. <laughs> Okay, me and Jack, I might as well tell ya. Cause you might have heard him just say Celine Dion Young. I don't know whether you're the same if you've got like a, a boyfriend or a girlfriend and you're in bed and sometimes like at 10 p.m. or 11 or 12, you just start to get really hyper and your mind's like doing weird things. And I said like, let's try and think of celebrities that are like revolved around vegetables. And one of them that came up was, which I thought was really clever and it was mine, obviously, was Celine Dion Young. Get it, Celine Dion? Celine Dion, yeah, okay, yeah. So, okay, we've got our Celine Dion onion. Um, just need one of them finely chopped. Then you need a celery stick. Jack got a whole bunch of them. <laughs> one garlic clove crushed. 
Fun fact here, this is how bad I am at cooking. One of the first times I've ever used garlic, obviously garlic usually comes in like a pack. I thought a clove of garlic was one of these, but turns out this is a bulb of garlic. So I actually made something before and I put the whole in. You won't even believe the breath. <laughs> <laughs> so that's 750 to 850 millilitres of the stock. Then we're doing 100 millilitres of single cream. So we've got the cream here. Um, and then just half a small bunch of parsley finely chopped. So usually you'd obviously saute your like garlic and your onion, salt and pepper, and then you'd obviously add your star, cauliflower or whatever it was. It seems like you just literally dump everything into here. I'm just gonna get going with chopping everything up that we need. Always wanted my own cooking show when I was doing guys and now I couldn't cook, so this is a very exciting moment. Okay, so it says one celery stick, finely chopped. So I'm gonna cut out one of the clothes. By the way, if you're a cook and you're watching this, you might want to look away from now because I'm so bad. I don't know how to do anything really when it comes to cooking. I'm going to choose quite a nice big garlic clove because I do really like garlic. We're going to chop the onion now. So now we have our onion, cauliflower. I'm going to boil the kettle for this stock. I'm going to start chopping everything. So again, please don't peep my knives. It is what it is. Okay, so that's the onion. I'm just gonna cut the celery. Got a few tips from you on Instagram. A few people say you can put a bit of olive oil or like fry light at the bottom of it because otherwise you can burn what's at the bottom. That was a good tip. Someone said they always like to do chunky over smooth because they find that the smooth makes it too watery. So I'm gonna start with chunky and then whatever. Oh, sleeve the onions again. <laughs> One large cauliflower. It shouldn't be tied to the mains, okay? You can't have it turned off at this point. You take it, and here's your little jug, and be careful of the blade, it says, okay? And I'm gonna put a little bit of olive oil just at the bottom, just so nothing's gonna stick too much. It did say it's really normal for it to stick, okay? And it's vegetables in first, and then liquid. So I'm gonna add my onion, and my celery, and then I'm gonna chop my garlic, Guys, can I just say Jack has never in his life ever cooked me a meal. Ever. Nothing. In goes the garlic. Oh, love a bit of garlic. Okay, now we're gonna add the cauliflower. So I'm just gonna break them up a little bit in the pot. That should do. Okay, half a tablespoon of cumin. Half a tablespoon of this. Two tablespoons of olive oil. And this is literally nearly done. This is not gonna take you long at all. After you've put all the ingredients in, you just leave it to do its thing. You don't even have to check it, I don't think. I think this is gonna be a really hot Christmas present, if I'm honest. Okay, so now we need the vegetable stock. I've just got like the easy ones, like the, um, the gooey ones. And then I'll just do it to 750 ml. We're just stirring in the stock. Just mix this until it's all in. Okay, now we're gonna add the water to the stock to here. And that's took us to our max. So I'm just gonna go slightly under because we have got to add the cream. But I'm just also gonna add a bit of salt in and also a bit of pepper. So I do like a lot of salt. Anything that's bad for you? A little bit. Bit of pepper, bit of salt, bit of pepper, bit of olive oil. So we're pretty much there now. 100 millilitres of cream, which would then take us to our max point so we're not able to add any more. If you obviously like it creamy, then you can add more if you want. In goes the cream. And literally, that's it. This is what this looks like all in here. This is the blade. Okay. So now we're adding that in. It's kind of like a blender, really. Okay, so now, plugging it into the main, um, we now have options. Okay, so smooth is 19 and chunky is 26 minutes. There we go. Why is it saying error? Okay, guys, so we found out the problem. It was showing an error message. We tried a few things. I chopped the veg up a bit more, probably wasn't needed. Basically, it was over the max line on the inside. Now we're gonna tidy up. This is on for 19 minutes for a smooth soup. 
So that's getting really hot, almost like it's kind of like a kettle. And in 19 minutes, that is gonna be all ready to go, which is really, really exciting. So I'm gonna tidy up now, and then by the time I've tidied up, it will be time to try the soup. Okay guys, so we are back. I literally felt like no time at all. It has been making some strange noises. So we're unplugging here. Here's what I prepared earlier. I've got two bowls, got some parsley for the top. And now, okay, that's it. Definitely. Yeah. Oh my God, spot on. No messing about. Then what I do is I add a bit of salt on the top. Cool. Depending how much you like it. And then I always do a little swirl of olive oil on the top. So, perfect, right? Mmm. And this literally looks just like the image on the BBC Good Food website, I'm not gonna lie. This is going to table number two. Although you're not coming on cam, I would like you to be my little guinea pig. In fact, we'll try it together. Mm. Needs more blending. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me have a go. Mm. Don't taste right. It doesn't, does it? Well, <laughs> I guess that's uh, the end of the show. Happy holidays, everyone. <laughs> it doesn't, it looks like it. I keep trying it to see if it's going to yeah, taste better. Yeah, it, look, it's not as taste, tasteful as your last one. Do you know yours is like, it's thick, it's creamy, it's soft, it's everything. And you, you yeah. eat it and you're like, wow, that's actually really, really nice. This is supposed to saute, right? blend and cook and all cook, in at once. Which is, in theory, a really, really good idea. I think that's well, right. Well, basically, guys, that soup is literally inedible. The full <laughs> recipe thing didn't work out. I'm not going to pretend it's nice because it's not. No. This is the end of the vlog today. Tomorrow we have acupuncture. We also have a friend's child's birthday. But yeah, tomorrow we're gonna do acupuncture, which is something we've never done before. I will talk you through how that is after we go tomorrow and hopefully show you a little bit about what it looks like. We're going to like a proper Chinese doctor's for it, which is literally five minutes down the road. Hope you've enjoyed the vlog so far. It's a mashup, but yeah, we'll, uh, we'll see you tomorrow for that. Right, let's throw this away. Hi guys, coming to you from my bedroom. Not yet brushed my hair or brushed my teeth or anything. It is Sunday, so we'll allow it. We didn't actually make it to acupuncture yesterday because after going to our friend's child's birthday, we were all like kind of like dressed up and stuff and we just thought, Do you know what, we're not feeling it today. Like we're not feeling in that kind of mode to go and be struck with pins. <laughs> Even though it's like meant to be like a relaxing experience, we just weren't in the mood for it. So we went just shopping and had some dessert and stuff instead. But today we have um, took the dogs on a walk. We've uploaded my Sunday YouTube video. We've tidied the house a little bit. We've had some nice breakfast. We had dippy eggs. And now we are gonna go and do some content for the week. Jack usually helps me with my Instagram pictures during the week. Like when I'm just wearing the outfit, we're gonna take a picture. But instead of doing like a picture every day which is obviously a little bit tiring um we're gonna go and shoot like three or four outfits all in one day so we're gonna go to locations that we've already been to that we already know that we like so i thought what we'll do is when we're actually at the picture locations i'll show you how jack takes my photos and i also thought i would add in just for something to spice things up how i edit my photos as well so as long as i can actually physically do a screen recording i'm not the best at technicals i'm going to show you exactly how i edit my photos from camera to on instagram but now this is what i look like now and i'm going to be ready in about 30 minutes and then I'll be back with you. Okay guys, I don't think you can see me very well because the light's off me, there we go. But we are now just shooting that content that I was talking about. So I've got my first outfit on and we've come to our first little location that we found to take pictures. It's like this, it's abandoned anyway, there's nothing in it. You can see through it. But we've come here to take some pics. I've got a really nice a sweat dress on and I'm gonna film Jack taking photos of me, but we forgot the wind muff thing, so it's probably going to be really windy, so we'll probably have to have the sound off on this one. At least you'll be able to see how Jack takes my photos. But yeah, I don't know why this was requested by you, but it was, so I thought I'd include it in today's vlog. So, here he is. Cameraman. He's got all the gear on, looks like a pap. <laughs> See 
that. We basically just take hundreds and hundreds and hundreds different right, from here. <laughs> to get a different shot. The key is picking your background. Sorry, she's interrupting me. But yeah, as you see, this is a nice background. This is a sunny day. So if you take the pictures in the sun, it looks crap. So we found a shaded area, which goes with Taylor's style. That was it for that shot. That took, what, 10 minutes? Yeah, we don't like to spend like more than 10 minutes really on getting the shot going. The locations actually take the time. The locations take the time, the shots only take 10-15 minutes. Yeah. Okay guys, so if you are wanting to maybe make your Instagram photos look a little bit more like your favourite influencer photos, I would definitely recommend using the app Lightroom have to be completely honest, I probably had it for a year before I even started using it because it does seem very complicated, especially when you're not used to using, you know, filters and kind of these type of editing tools. So um, you may look at, you may feel a little bit overwhelmed with it at first, but trust me, once you get to know how to use it, it's very, very simple. So first of all, you obviously want to select your photo that you want to edit. And then once you have kind of put it into the app, just by doing this, you then um, want to press into the colours. And then I choose the colours that are along the toolbar. And basically this will enable you to take out tones and colours in the photo that perhaps you don't want or create more of a tone that you do want. So for example, the first thing that I tend to do is take some of the yellow out which makes everything look a bit more white and more like monochrome which I like I don't like taking it all out because I don't want them to look too clinical but I like to take the yellow tint out so you can play with that as much or as little as you want you can see that it, you can either go super warm or you can go super cool and I just like to to take a good chunk out but not too much and then the second thing that I would like to do is make myself look a bit more tanned um, which is very convenient if you haven't fake tanned um, so by doing that you press the orange and all you do is take the lumen the luminance or the luminosity out uh, down backwards so that will make you a lot more tanned as you can see or if you want to make yourself a little bit paler which I'm sure you don't you can turn it up so um, then also if you start to go a little bit maybe too in the tan section but you want like that depth to your skin you can then saturate it a little bit so that you don't get orange um, then you can just like take away any other tones that you like I often take the blue out because sometimes you can with like quite white and light pictures you can get like a bit of a blue effect which I don't like I want it to look almost more like white and cream so I take the blue down on both um, and then you can take the green tone out as well that's usually in quite a lot of photos and it makes a huge difference. So once you've played with the colours for a bit, very simple to do once you know how, then I will go into the lighting settings and I usually take the highlights down first which just gives it that kind of almost like hazy shadow effect which you see a lot of influencers using. After I've done that, I usually do that like literally nearly the whole way down because I just think it doesn't add too much, but it adds like a, a nice kind of effect. Then I will take the exposure down. The exposure is like the main thing. If you're wondering why my photos or how I get my photos quite like moody and dark, which is like the vibe I'm going for at the minute even though like my mum and my sisters are like, well not my both of my sisters but my older sister is like is this a trend for you to have like your photos dark because I feel like I'm squinting to look at them but you know what it's a vibe and I'm here for it but yeah take the exposure down um if that's something that you want to do and that's the main thing to kind of create that like moody dark Instagram influencer kind of vibe that we all want so yeah I think that's pretty much it oh I do also add some sharpness to the photo. Um, I feel like my camera, which is like a big Canon, kind of like makes everything look a bit like almost filtered. 
um, but I like to sharpen things back up again just so that you can see everything. I'm a details person. And then I also like to add a bit of texture as well. So that is generally all I will do for my photos. I do like the smoothing tool as well. Um, and I will just use Facetune for that. And that is literally just purely for the smoothness of the photo or sharpening as well. I like to do in there, but in terms of editing, shaping my body or my face or anything, I do not touch those um, controls on Facetune anymore. And I will not because, yeah, for obvious reasons. So, yeah, that's it, guys. I... Um, I don't know whether this is something that you're interested in, but that is the exact tutorial of what I do on my photos. Hi guys, we have completely forgot to vlog today. Just been living in our own little world where we just do a little bit of things that we want to do and spend some nice time together. We just been and had dessert on the port. Really fancied something sweet. We had a coffee. Just have a little look around, maybe for another hour, and then we are going to head home to see the dogs and let them out for a wee. So, that's really as exciting as it's getting today. Yeah, I think we'll finish the vlog here. Hope you've enjoyed it. And um, like, hit the like button if you've, you've enjoyed watching this. Subscribe to our channel. And we will see you soon. Bye, guys. Bye.